podcast. If uh, you can't notice, we're brought to you by Equity. EQ. EQ. Gotta love them. Gotta love them. How about uh, the guest today, Mikey Fletcher? Buddy. Pleasure to be here, boys. <laughs> Man, we got some new social media people in the house. We got lots more cameras going on. Let's hope that we got the behind the scenes yeah, so before yeah. we started this podcast on the podcast. <laughs> like uh, Brandon's always talking about needing more subscribers. We're going to have plenty. Yeah, it's, it's uh it's a pleasure to be at the Tullus and Mac. I, only time I ever got to go to the Thomas and Mac uh was leading barrel racers down the alleyway. So it's it's, it's, it's like, exciting. It's uh it's ex- even that's exciting. Yeah, right? your feet were on the dirt at least. <laughs> they offered me I was uh I was seventeen the sixteenth guy, so I guess that's the first loser every year. He gets to the award of they offer him uh, I think you get a room. You know, they give you a room for the week and they give you 200 bucks a day to come rope the extras. Uh, okay. at, you know, each night after the perf, they, they, they'll be like one or two extras oh. in each event. And so the 16th guy in the timed events, they get to go uh, and if they want to and, you know, rope the calves, bulldog the steers. And it's just two a night. You got to sit there and have a horse. And then as soon as it's the rodeo's over, they run them through just to keep the runs even and. Uh, I don't know who was 16th that year. I was 17th, and they uh, they didn't want to do it, and they called me to to do it. And uh, I the, I said okay. You know, I was gonna be there. I, I was uh, dating uh, Jenna Ward. She was a world champion bell racer, and she was gonna go anyways. And I had to go anyways. So I was like, well, this is gonna suck, but at least I'll you know be involved in this. And I'll never forget. I the first night I go and I do a good job show up on time you know <laughs> tell the horse you had your horse go go on a take my 200 that they gave me there for doing that and i think that uh turned into a blackjack table bender at some point but i uh i didn't make it the second okay. night <laughs> to run the extra so a calf roper had ran them and he went ahead and just took took it yeah. from there you know that's solid they so, didn't, I made 200 and they kept the rest of the money. Just like so you got to tell me, when you were walking this barrel racer down the alleyway, did you wear her jacket? No, no. I lost all respect for Jess Lockwood. Yeah, I year. think that's, uh, yeah. you can't do that. Dude. You can't do that. I love Jess Lockwood, don't get me wrong, but bro, come on. Wearing her jacket? Uh, it it you, was cold, dude. Dude, I don't care. We'll get your own jacket. G- Garrett Tanazi <laughs> used to make, uh, he would make so much fun of me, you know, and, about doing that and uh and now i just every night i just shoot my text and, yeah. uh, not so funny anymore it's not is so it? funny not is so it? funny it's about 45 exactly. trips down that <laughs> now he's having a bunch yeah. of trips isn't yeah. he yeah. i never knew that though about the 16 person having to go there that's oh, yeah. pretty cool huh? yeah, yeah. It's, it's cool yeah now a lot of times i don't know if that's how they still do it but that's that's oh. how they do it it's, it's, it's different now i don't have to be the 16th guy but it can be yeah. anybody it was just like to me like a kick to the nuts like, like a, <laughs> yeah like, oh you can come yeah. dude we'll give you can't run for you know you can't run for thirty thousand and i but we'll give you 200 bucks you can run consolation yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, let's talk about that huh 17th twice yeah tough man that's gotta be a kick in the nuts <laughs> that was a kick in the nuts yeah. it's uh you know it's uh i don't like to say it's a story of my life's a day late and a dollar short but it uh you know i just I wasn't a good businessman. I mean, that's, uh, I, I wouldn't trade. Uh, I had a great life. I've met a lot of wonderful people, uh, got great friends and made it out alive, you know, getting out of rodeo alive and not a social media psychopath is half the battle. And so, uh, you know, that's, uh, I had a good run. I had a lot of fun. I probably had a lot more fun than guys that won more than me. Um, but, and that can, contributed to uh my nightlife definitely probably affected the daytime I, at the time you don't think it does you know but uh, you look over there and clay try and say it's 8 a.m slack and you know 7 15 and he's already he's saddled and you know trevor just looks good and he feel good and they're roping they got the mojo out there and just getting smoke off of it and I just stumble over there, you know, just, just, just the hair still a little wet. Eight o'clock slacks, man, are tough on a guy. I haven't even called my horse yet. Mike is a perf guy, dude. He wants the afternoon perfs, bro. You know? I'm an afternoon perf. I'm definitely a perf, perf guy. guy. 
that's how we're gonna say the yeah. perf guy. I like it. I like uh, it. I love that afternoon perf. But let's let's talk about some of them big ones you hit, huh? BFI in 03? Yeah, the, me and Travis Woodard uh, won the BFI. Placed at it a couple of times. I when I was a kid, um, they did a thing for it a couple uh, of weeks back. They're gonna put on the Cowboy Channel just about the BFI champs and stuff. And I told a story on there about I was from Florida. I was raised in Okeechobee, Florida. I was a, a little punk kid. My dad was a world champion sidewalk rider and a straight up cowboy. You know, full dress code every day. Uh, I'm more, this is, you know, I'm a team roper, you know, yeah. it's, uh, no, I don't like to throw the word cowboy around, but, uh, he would go to Kissimmee, Kissimmee and, uh, Brighton were their biggest rodeos we had. Uh, and so all the guys would come down, you know, all the, the good ropers and stuff. And I, I was too big of a puss to ever want to ride Bronx or anything like that was never an option for me. And, uh, I, 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 10 12 13 years old you know i was roping a lot my dad still roped you know he was a roughie but he was a cowboy so he roped mm-hmm. he did every bit and uh i remember when i was just almost 13 i was just starting to like rope and i was just you know i was like man i'm you know i, lo- I love this and i i went <clears throat> to Kissimmee. my dad was riding bronx and i uh i'm up there watching the team rope and, and i see this guy and he doesn't even have a horse he, he's Walks up there and he's just man, his shirt's just starched and he's increasing those Wranglers. Those WWs look good and he had this belt buckle on and I mean it is, I mean it, it's it's blinding me, you know. I mean, it, and it's just the, the old school BFI buckle and and uh, he didn't even have a cowboy hat on. You know, he had just had a tight comb over and uh, it was Rube Woolsey. And I I, I asked I, I knew Tyler Magnus. Tyler had uh, was roping with Kermit Moss and Tyler Magnus uh, knew a friend of my dad's and we'd had some we'd always had an arena and had roping schools and we had Walt Woodard and we had Jake and Clay and we had you know we'd have somebody every year come down and Tyler and Kermit was down the rodeo and so they did it one year and uh, crazy thing about it I'd probably learned more from Tyler Magnus than I did all the other guys you know I mm-hmm. felt like he was just really easy to talk to and uh, but I asked Tyler and I said, who is that? And he said, that's Rube Woolsey son. And he <laughs> said, that guy sticks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he does. Just, man, he just got it. You know, I mean, he just backed in there and I, and I, when I saw him, just his aura and I, I thought that's my man, you just know, that's, man that's the guy I can't, he can't reach. I can't reach either. You know, this is, <laughs> this is the guy I want to be, you know, right. and so, uh, can just catch them all. And that's, that's what I, I thought, you know, uh, when I went and stayed, a guy named Fletcher Nail was a circuit champ, and we'd we'd won the circuit, and we uh, went to Pocatello, Idaho, and uh, we went up there. I won the Dodge National Circuit Finals, won the average, and uh, Walt Woodard called me that night, and he said, "Hey, Mikey Fletcher, my uh, it's Walt Woodard." Holy shit! You know, I holy shit, him, this is him. I was like, prank calling. Uh, <laughs> Caesar's talked to Walt. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be some Caesar's bullshit. Caesar's talked to Walt. Oh man, and you know how he is. Like oh, how he yeah. talks, he says Walt Woodard. Yeah, I mean, he's just, I mean, he's a straight up G. I yeah. Mean, he is professional, but while he's funny, you know, once you get to know him, he's got a great sense of humor and he's a, he's a very, I would say a very interesting man. One of, one of my favorites. Yeah. He, he's got an incredible mind, man. That's, I think that's why he won his world titles. Yeah. He's, yeah. He, he's mentally just, uh, he's a G. I mean, he gives, like, he could give motivation. He goes to these colleges and, like, he's there. What do you call it when people graduate? Speaking. Yeah, at the end of the day, they're like, hey, don't screw your life up. Yeah. Which is funny because he, <laughs> he, he, I lived with the dude for three years. <laughs> <laughs> he did a very good job. But you could stick. <laughs> but you could stick. So. Yeah, yeah, and he called me and said, Mike Fletcher, I want you to have my son. And I was like, holy shit, you know. And and uh, Fletcher Nell told me that day, he said, you got to get out of here, dude. You got to. Yeah, this is your shot. You know, you're going to sit down here in Florida, these bunch of alligators yeah. jerking off down here. Get, get, get up there. And he said, uh, just just turn steers, dude. There's no don't, only thing. The same thing I like is the same thing every healer likes. Yeah. They want to throw their rope. Mm-hmm. And if they don't get to throw their rope, they don't have very much fun. You ain't going to be there very long. You're not going to be there very long. <laughs> but if you let a healer throw his rope a lot and you give him a lot of chances and he can get teed off and get tapped, he enjoys it. Oh, yeah. And uh, and it's and uh, that that was the rest of the story. You know, I moved over there to California, uh, French Camp Road, right there with Walt Woodard, and then uh, you know helped him with his schools and stayed there two or three years. Uh, we 
me and T would got got close. We just had a little health rotors, and he was I was a young guy, and he was a young guy, and you know we were good at the jackpots, and we could keep it together, you know. And but uh, the rodeos, we just you know just just barely miss, you know. Like yeah. I mean, seventeenth's close. Seventeenth is one that's, rodeo away we're from making sixty-eight. You know, you know one <laughs> rodeo, one. That's very rodeo. respectful. I mean, that's yeah. that's hell of an accomplishment. What's man. what's that got to do like mentally to you at seventeenth? Do you do you want to you want to be the first one to enter Denver, so you're ready to go right back after it? Or are you saying you, do you, do you want to end it? Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm like fuck you, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. like yeah. fuck yeah. it, just, we're selling every day. Steering wheel into the ditch over there, just <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly what I'm asking. Uh, yeah, it's uh, in the words of Caesar Dela Cruz, it's uh, it's a bomber, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's a bomber, man. Yeah, it's a bomber, man. Gosh, yeah. Uh, you know, it's a. Uh, it, <laughs> When you're there, you well, when you're seventeenth, you think you got a shot till you know. Then it was the Cal uh, Cal Palace still had a rodeo. It was still like the last rodeo, mm-hmm. and uh, and I think maybe Cal Palace, Kansas City, like they didn't have. I think what they have now, like uh, what's the rodeo in California? Uh, Mission uh, San Bernardino, San Bernardino Palway. Palway and yeah. stuff. But and they had a couple. I think they had a couple of them were right in the same time, but. Uh, up until the Cow Palace, you know, the day monies were 2500 2800 You think, I got a, I got a shot, you know. We just, I just needed a, that, That's the thing about me and Travis. You know, we have got a good winner. And if, you might. Th- these guys, the, you know, the general public thinks, well, how does this guy make it? And this, it, you know, you, you uh, several times. With Tommy, I remember with Tommy Zuner, he got, was one of my favorite people I ever wrote with. You know, in the winter, we had $34,000 won uh, when we left Fort Worth. You know, and that's that's a lot. That's uh, you know, and, but never won another dollar for four months. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that's you, it. Just you get on this. You know, you're out there, and you. you know, I rope with a lot of young guys, and that you know, I rope with Cody Dosher his rookie year, you know, Kyle Crick his rookie year, and I was always a little older. But uh, you know, when you're young and a, and as a healer, and I, you you don't get to, you know. They get to rope every day. When you're growing up, they rope every day. They go, they go to rope and they go to amateur rodeo. We'll fix this Monday. We'll fix, you know, a horse isn't working, or I'm leaving a little high on the ride. My position, I'll fix it Monday. When you're rodeoing, there is no fix it. Monday is a rodeo. Right. Well, Tuesday is another rodeo, and Thursday, I don't. The day I didn't have to go to the rodeo, I drove 14 hours to the rodeo. My partners. He's being a dick you know, <laughs> because I haven't caught one in three, you know, in right. a week, yeah. and now you know, and it just weighs on a guy, and we, and you know, it, it it's it's hard, and when you're young like that, and then it, it just you know, even I'm a positive dude. I'm not a, you know, I'm not gonna give you the, I'm not gonna give you the Joe V. Like, <laughs> you know, I mean, it is what it is, and we're in this together, and but there's no place to like pull over and. Let's run some and break it and fix this because it just and it just kind of snowballs and then here we go and then next thing you know, by the time he's healing good, now my head horse is crippled and yep. here we are and we're still forty five hundred away uh, and that's that's the story. But you just uh, you go home. I always you know my dad always told me when you're not winning at the pro rodeos, get your ass home and go to the amateur rodeos and get your mind right. And get your mind right. I think a lot of uh, guys miss out on that. If I mean, if you can't beat these guys in my backyard, I don't need to go any further than that. I, mean, I don't need to drive 14 hours to see if no, I can get my ass handed to me. Yeah. I can do that right here, right across the street. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I would always come home, you know, make the amateur finals. And, you know, it's funny how rodeo, you, you leave there and you're whipped, you're like a whipped, a whipped dog. And you, you get home and you, you pull the old amateur rodeo book out. And you're like, oh, still two months left, you know, make the, you know, you make the Texas finals and enter, you know, three a weekend, four a weekend. And next it kind of snowballs and you're catching, you're making some good runs and make the amateur finals, win amateur finals. And now you're just, like you said, when's the books for Denver? We're going to tear them up, dude. Yeah. And it's, uh, <laughs> it's exciting every time you go there. And, you know, it's, I, I like the, I, I think the, the way the rodeos are now, I, I would have liked that better. They have these, um, what are they, like a bracket style? Is tournament it, style, tournament yeah. Style. And I, I think it would have been better for me. I'm a catcher, you know. I um, I remember I wrote, when they had the tour, they used to have 12 tour stops. And uh, 
I was super broke and uh, I'd bought a head horse from Tammy West and uh, oh, I, I, I think I had like $14,000. She wanted 15000 for this horse and I had $14,000 to my name. And uh, t- I said, Tammy, I said, I need, I need this horse. And then this is, so that's like a $40,000 head horse now, 50 mm-hmm. then. But, and uh, I said, this is like, oh, six. I was like, Tammy, I, I, I got no wheels. I got nothing to ride. <laughs> and she, you know, she runs close. I mean, this, I mean, this horse was my style. And, and, uh, and she's like, what do you got? I said, I got 40,000. I said, but I really, honestly, I need a thousand of that. <laughs> I need to give you 13. And she said, I'll take 13. She, she said, uh, give me 13,000. And she said, keep your grand. And uh, man, that horse was great. And, you know, we, uh, uh, I'm kind of excited and I, but I was still kind of broke, you know, and I was roping with Kyle Crick and, uh, he was my buddy and his horse kind of, he, he had a heel horse get crippled, which I didn't think was that big of a deal but i guess it's a big deal dude. it's a big deal it's, it's a pretty big deal it's, it's, your, it's your wheels it's a pretty big deal turns <laughs> out it matters for healers too <laughs> i thought you guys could just heal on anything but uh, bob uh, how many times you heard that caesar oh, what's the fuck's problem you can heal on anything i don't know about that man <laughs> that uh that's when bob bays bob bays called me it was the first time i'd ever been like i don't want to say like had, had a gig not paid or out but i had a you know, a financial benefit, you know, I, I just needed to turn steers. If that was, it was my job. A to benefactor. Head. It was my job to head. And, Got a money, man. And we, uh, uh, we made, there was 12 tornadoes. We made 11 short rounds. Me and Bob Bates, we had 11 <laughs> short rounds. And I think, uh, I don't think we won better than fifth. We placed between fifth and eighth. Oh, wow. You know, probably nine of the 11 times. So I mean, never, and I mean, Catching too. I mean, we're clean. <laughs> if, if I don't throw fast and you don't throw fast, we're not going to be fast. We're not going to be fast. <laughs> and I told him, we left, we left Caldwell, Idaho, and Bob was a fun partner. Uh, Caesar will attest this. He doesn't drink. He doesn't, uh, you know, he doesn't do any drugs. And but fun though, right? But he like he likes chase women. He likes. Women. <laughs> Bob enjoys, uh, he, he's a coxman. And so he, he likes to go to the bar. He always wanted to go to the bar, which was like, this is like my dream part. This is my dream partner. You got a drive. We're right, just going to keep making short rounds. And he could drive. I got a sober drive. Yeah, he would drive. He's like, oh, God, he would drive us to the bar every night. And I would just, I mean, he'd wake up. He feels fine. I'm just like, oh, my God. Yeah, it would be 8-3 on another. <laughs> you're, look, you're looking out the window going, oh, shit. Uh, we left Caldwell and I'm just hung over because Caldwell Night Rodeo is a like fun, you know, they have a, they have the arena and then they have this barn, this humongous barn to the right. It's just a freaking rave in there. It's <laughs> <laughs> a party. They're getting down. They love Cowboys. We're just having fun. We, we leave there and we're, uh, we win another, you know, eighth place check. <laughs> Eight hundred forty-seven dollars. Solid eighth place. I tell Bob, I said, Bob, son, I said, I love you, bro, but one of us, one of us is gonna have to get it out of their mitt, dude. One of us is gonna have to jack. You gotta, you, I gotta come over the gates, or you gotta jack it down there. I mean, because this is, this is, this ain't working. You know? We're living right here. But I think with the tournament style, I think it got you know the guys that win and kick ass. They don't love the tournament style because it's basically we they're gonna they're gonna be the fastest time. Anyways, up there, Brock. Uh, you know, and so that would have been a ten ten thousand dollar check for the day of money. Now it's just two, and they got to do yeah, it. Yeah, keep the one. And, but guys that can just you know three clean runs usually kind of now I just got to catch one steer. Yeah. You know, now it's just a clean slate one hitter, and yeah. you know who knows? Because the ones that are going fast, you know, and they have a higher chance of uh, that's a higher percentage exactly, of missing them too. Yeah. So Squeeze might lose his rope. Maybe Driggers gets the bear. Maybe Never Fletch, know. Maybe Fletcher's got a shot. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> maybe yeah. A shot. You won the U.S. Finals in 02, You said with uh, with York Gill. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he uh, was uh, uh, from Tennessee. You know, he was still lived in Tennessee then. He lives in Stephenville now. I think York made the finals uh, mm-hmm. maybe once or twice. And he yep. ro- roped great. York uh, York do anything good. You know, he's a. I think he runs now or does some kind of cross training. He's a shit. beast now, yeah, like never, an animal now. I, just an athlete. Uh, yeah. I text him. He just won't even put his shirt on. He just walks around with no shirt on, just <laughs> just showing his abs. I'm there like, you go. Lord, Lord, yeah. 
<laughs> I, how about that big rope they have in Texas, the George Strait? Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, I won. Uh, I won third a couple of times. Uh, I tell you, the best, um, the most I ever won was the year they had. I think they had like eight hundred teams at this thing, and it was five hundred man go three times. And uh, it was the year that everyone. I think Garrett maybe won it. It was the year that everyone missed. In the short round, me and Jim Cooper had a leg, and we won. We won third, and uh, and then I had another guy. I made the I made the top fifty twice there, uh, and I, Kip Harrell, and we uh, we had placed down there a little bit. One, you know, up there. I mean, I think I was still one forty, you know, forty five thousand. It was such a good rope. Great rope. So sad that it. I mean, I know that George is. I when I quit rodeo and I moved to Tapatio Springs which is a golf course that Tom Cusack and George Strait own. And I, uh, you know, I, I, he, he loves to golf. You know, he doesn't rope anymore. Mm-hmm. George just golfs and <laughs> dinks around. Bubba doesn't rope really. And, uh, you know, and they, I just think he didn't like the heart, you know, just didn't want to deal with it. And then when his brother died, his bro- brother kind of ran the whole rope in and George just showed up and, Mm-hmm. was George and it's uh it's sad because that was such an exciting time and it was a uh, it was such a when I was a kid like watching that rope and you get, I can remember like tapes of like Todd Arthur and Camus Jennings, Jackie Stevenson, uh, Quattro Hines, oh, yeah. you know, that little oh, yeah. he Quattro. that dude freaking hammered back <laughs> then too and it, it was uh it was so fun to watch you know and uh you know I it's it's sad that 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 Relpin didn't. I mean, they should have just made him keep having it. Oh yeah, just, just keep the name. Like, yeah, just keep the name. Yeah. Have him show yeah. up a little bit or something like that. Yeah. That'd be kind of cool. But when you're the king, you know, you can, nobody king. can make you do anything. Yes, the king's true. the king. Hey, we're gonna take a little break, fill these cups up, and we'll come right back. Hey, welcome back to the <laughs> Tall and Matt with Mikey Fletcher. Brandon Brown, what you got for me over there? Man, I just want to tell you about that best ever pads. Ooh. Pads, man, they're sweet. I love the best ever pads. You got one in Vegas, didn't you? Yeah, we got a couple of them, Max. Uh, Caesar took me over to that booth, and I just want to let the viewers know them pads are top-notch, fit my horse just right. Ryan and Tam are the best. Heck yeah. The name speaks for itself. It does, so shout out best ever pads. But we got Let's Mikey get back Fletcher. to Mikey Fletcher stories. Mikey Fletcher. Some, okay. some of my so, favorites. Another fellow if you, best ever in Dorsey. There you go. Heck yeah. I mean, if you've let your kids listen to the first half of the podcast... The second half Turn of the podcast off. might be the time. No, I'm just kidding. Mikey, we got to talk about the Biltmore in Oklahoma. Uh, it's a great, it's a great <laughs> bar. First of all, yep. uh, right, right behind the Holiday Inn, or it's a in in the Holiday Inn had some shuffleboard. Well, it is by the Trappers as well, right? Yeah, that, right you got to eat. You guys got to eat. Guys got to get oh, a good, guy gets hungry. Yeah, you need to have a if you live a lifestyle that I live. It's important to have a good base. You know, yeah, get, you. get a good you foundation. Yeah. And, so you were a thinking man. I was a thinking man. I didn't do anything too reckless. That uh, I, I had a plan, and it was usually the wrong one. You know, it's. Uh, but you had a plan. Yeah, I did have. Let's a plan. Let's give you credit for having a plan. That that built more. It's you know they said they tore it. You know I don't know if they even have anything in the city anymore, but they tore it down. I used to love, you know, they have the U.S. Finals in Texas now, and I, I just saw it. Just always was, it was just so awesome in Oklahoma City. I can remember the, you know, you go over there and. You got your you're entered up. You get there and you you got your best buddy and you guys are making runs and of course you're headed to the, you spend all your time in the challenge pen. I'm mm-hmm. assuming that's mm-hmm. where you spent too. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, I remember I had a kid named Shane Powell. I'd, Ching he's, Powell. Shane Powell. You know from East Texas and he man he could heal him down. He old paint horse and he'd set him down and uh, we would just we win that challenge pen probably three or four times, you know, we might win seven grand and give them over the next three days, give it all back. Give back some, more, it's like Vegas. <laughs> more to them. But, uh, the year in question that you're probably talking about, my, my mom tells this story and she's a shame. You know, my dad's a, he's a, he got a great little country church there in East Texas. And now I live a, to all the viewers out there that, you know, everybody knows me. I live a entirely different lifestyle. Changed man, if you will. Yes, sir. Change, man. We all. But these up. were all good stories. We all yeah. grow up. It's a good, clean, fun. But I, uh, you know, I, I, I was so broke, and I got up there, and I won the. 
I won the maybe second in the prelim, uh, the call, and I won the U.S. finals. And I was just so, I mean, I had 30, you know, almost 40 grand in my pocket. You know, went from chicken shit to chicken salad. You know, the next day, I mean, when you're rodeoing like that, you, you got you, you live the dream. You know, you're a degenerate gambler to some extent, but you're living the dream of, you know, I've, I mean, I've practiced this. I rope every day. I mean, I, I'm not just I'm not flipping quarters here. You know, I Making like, a living with your rope. Yeah, I feel like I got a chance. You know, I'm going to put my name down. And that's, uh, uh, I, I left there. I was so excited and I was so happy. And I, I went, uh, went to the Biltmore that night and may have shut it down. I don't know. Brandon, what did you say? There was, there was a strip club right top, door. top something, top dogs or top, top something. But <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the name strip of it. club should be called <laughs> top dogs in Oklahoma. Yeah. <laughs> it, was up, it had an upstairs. Huh? It did have an upstairs. We went over there and shut it down and I, I woke up and, uh, God, I, 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 I just you know in a you know a stupor there and i i get around i can't find any of my my belongings and my stuff and uh, i have my belt you know i grab it and hook it on or take a sheet and put it on and ease outside of this motel room that i didn't you got your I, belt I, on I had anything, anything, almost like a caesar type oh, you know, yeah, kind of robe. Caesar. I, I was mm-hmm. sitting on the park bench there outside and jake cooper had uh i was staying with jake cooper jake and jim cooper had a house in stephenville and me and uh blaine vick and kyle crick all lived there together and uh it was, it was a wonderful time of the erath county stephenville area you know i these kids today don't understand shit that went down over there, but, uh, Jake Cooper texts me, Jake and Jake, you know, he doesn't, he's kind of like Bobby he doesn't drink or, you know, do anything wrong, but he likes to go to the bar too. You know, he's fun. You know, yeah. he, uh, he, he's a prankster. He definitely likes to, you know, bust your balls if he can. And he's like, yeah, I'll be right there. Well, I was needless. I don't know that he has my mother <laughs> in the truck with it. And I'm sitting there, and I, I'm just sitting there, and my, my, I got my boots on and my belt and the sheet and the swallaby. He's got one of them, you know, one of them big old four-door swallaby trucks, pulls out, and Peter Bilt just, shit. The door <laughs> opens, and I'm, like, running over there naked, and my mom just kicks the door open. I'm like, fuck. Oh, man. Yeah, and I just I felt, you know, it's just the, you can let a lot of people down when you just feel like you. That Your mom. mom. Yeah, I know, and she's like. I know it looks like you had a good time last night. I mean, <laughs> That's a solid mom. That's you a good mom. Spend all your money you want. I was like, well, it's Oklahoma City. You can't. You can't. If it was Vegas, it might be different. Oh, but it's Oklahoma. Four hundred yeah. bucks, max it out. Okay? <laughs> you have a lot of fun on four hundred. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, you know, bad decisions of a misspent youth is what I t- turn into. It happens. It happens. My, some one of my favorite stories for sure. Um, you've, you've dated some, some beautiful women in your past. Okay. Date, dating the, one now, the most beautiful the most, one. Uh, Shelby's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Shout out to Shelby. Shout out to Shelby. Yeah. He's right over there behind the light. There was, there was a gal by the name of Anna Nicole Smith. You were on a show. Yeah. I don't, a lot of people don't know about. Can you, can you, it was? well, I don't know what show. Can you, can you, um, explain to the, to the listeners and some, that, that kind of story? Cause that's one of my favorite Mikey, Mikey Fletcher stories. <laughs> Uh, I appreciate you for bringing that up. Team Cactus, too, by the way. Yeah, uh, so I really appreciate you for bringing that he, up. He, 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 had the, he had the sponsorship and everything. Got, but... got my future soulmate here in the room. And... <laughs> Shelby's throwing shit at him. Right it's there. very important to, to, to lay it all in line. Everybody oh, knows yeah. the truth. It's just like your buddy. Dude's got nine fingers. He's right? throwing me on a yeah. over here. Pushed he used to call me the three-fingered assassin. Hey, yeah, the three-fingered let me just tell you, let, just for the record, I have it right here. Wrote down and I'm going all the way around it because I don't want to get to it. Caesar just died right I just I just wanted to get into it because I can't wait no more, man. My it's my, man. It's my favorite story. He, it was just so hilarious. Like he, 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 he was world famous. If, if the TikToks and all that stuff was oh, going, it would have been just. If it was social media, I don't. I'd be like Jake Paul right now. It would have been amazing. Yeah, yeah like he'd been way cooler yeah, than Jake Paul. I, uh, they, yeah. Do you have Arena's number on speed up? No, so I, I, could, I, I just wanted some dirt. I wanted to go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, for sure. But you know, 
Yeah. Aaron and Nicole was one of my favorites because yeah. I was when I was a child, you know, a young young boy. Yeah. They they had a little magazine called Playboy, and she was she was on one of those magazines, and mm-hmm. she was. Uh, she, and so that's why you were always one of my heroes. You know I, I mean? th- thank you for that. It, <laughs> it's it's nothing to do with your opening. <laughs> yeah, you're okay. the viewers are like, get to what are you guys talking about? <laughs> you're not good, but you, uh, you, know, you hooked up with a playmate, so yeah. that's more. Let's talk about that. Yeah. I mean, I don't know very many guys that did that. We uh, we were in just probably oh three ish, and we're we're at Laughlin, Nevada. Me and Travis made the short round there, and uh, no, this might have been uh, this might have been oh two. This is like maybe oh two or three, but we made the short round there, and Laughlin was a tour rodeo, and so the short round was on a Saturday. Uh, it was on Sunday. I'm sorry, and so it's it's Saturday, but we're not up. But I wanted to watch the steers, mm-hmm. and so I put my you know, put my outfit on, you know, put my cowboy outfit on, and I go up there, I'm sitting behind the head box, and we're watching the steers go, and uh, I look in the stands, and I you know, I see this blonde, big tits, and I I look at her, and I'm like, that's that's Anna Nicole Smith. She sure looks familiar. Not, she looks, yeah, I said, that's got to be her, dude. And, uh, and you're in Laughlin? Yeah, I'm in Laughlin, Nevada. Wow. And they're like, no, dude. And I say, yeah. And, so I walk over there and I said, uh, I'm, I'm going to go meet her. This is my shot. I'm shooting my shot. Mike is never scared, dude. I don't I see him as scared. No, I don't see him as backing kid, up. You kids these days, just, just shoot your shot. Man. Just shoot your yeah, shot, man. Know, scared. What are they gonna you do? guys are going to have a comment. Half man. court, shoot it. Right. Yeah, they, they, they can't take your birthday away. <laughs> yeah, they, they ain't going to do nothing to you until you know. Until Me, him, and Dennis are going to go to Mexico. I know. <laughs> to open a bar to get three amigos. Three amigos. Meet them <laughs> at Dennis Gates. Gates. <laughs> the mule train. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So we yeah. don't meet Anna. So I go up there and, you know, she's, uh, hey, how you doing? You know, I just want to say hi to me. I'm kind of bullshitting for a minute. You know, I wanted to get my picture took with her. So I said, this is, <laughs> this is pre, this is uh, no, snake phone. No cell phone really, right? No, like, maybe, you know. maybe razor, you know, oh, maybe. Oh, yeah, no, okay. I mean, no, Flip. no, you know, we had to get the, the he would have had a razor. I had the old school Nokia, but he had a razor, so it had a it had a camera on it. And I'm like, we get our let's get our picture took with her. So I get my picture took with her and you know, BS her for a minute and I walk, I walk down, I say bye, and then I when I'm walked down, this guy comes in uh about ten minutes later, he comes and finds me there behind the shoots and he says, uh, hey, you know, we want Anna Anna wants to she wants to talk to you for a second. So I'm like Go back over there and all right, walk back upstairs like bull riding out. Mm-hmm. She said, Hey, I want to ride a horse. I said, you want to ride a horse, man. We'll get you a horse. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll get you a horse right now. <laughs> so, uh, Travis had a little sorrow horse named Cash, and uh, Travis would always had nice horses, gentle, you know? nice. Yeah, if you guys know the Brady's horse, the yeah. Chug, that horse oh, comes from T Wood, you know, I mean, he's always rides a nice horse. and uh, he had this little star which was short and gentle as a dog. And I said, well, we, uh, we saddle. I said, T-Wood, get that. <laughs> <laughs> he runs over there and catches him. We saddle him up. And so the guy meets us. And he says, hey, before we do this, you know, she had, um, uh, she had like two makeup girls. She had a posse. This is, you know, and uh, for the viewers out there, you know, there's re- reality TV is a big deal, but this is, there, there was no, she had the first reality television show. It was the Anna Nicole Smith show. There was no reality TV before that. Yeah, I remember when yeah, that came out. It was, it was huge. Like a, it was like a weird thing because yeah. no one knew what like reality TV. you were TV. watching her yeah. live her life. Yeah, yeah. You'd yeah. never yeah. done that before. You'd never done that. Now it's like Normal, everybody's yeah. got their life on TV. But th- at this time, you know, they're like, this guy's a psychopath. You know, because yeah. it's, most people are when you video them every day but right. uh she kind of was anyways but <laughs> they, they uh they, they, they make a sign some releases you know like hey you know, so she's not gonna get hurt but they said you know you're gonna be on the show so we'll mic you up and i was like all right great you know and, you're like you know, like you're happy in hell yeah I'm you great. know you're <laughs> i'm good we're gonna show and you're just uh, hoping this first uh, time yeah and apparently you know she's from mejia texas and and she um that's why she wanted to go to the rodeo you know and then she had a uh, basically on the show that year, they had had a thing where you could like win a date. Like you could take her on a date and they had this big thing. And this guy had won this date with her and he wanted to take her to the rodeo. They were staying there in Las Vegas and this guy, it's like 40 minutes, you know, and this guy wanted to 
take her to the rodeo in Laughlin. So bad idea, but <laughs> <laughs> it worked out so good for him. So I get, we get her over there and we get, I mean, she's a big woman, you know, you know, she's, she's, Healthy. she's six, four. And she oh, had, she had she went through a trend. Yeah. She had went through a transitional period, I think. <laughs> and, uh, and she had gotten really big and she was kind of back, about back down to her fighting weight, but still, still. She had a girl spurt. Yeah, and she, but she's big. You know, she got big old, big Boop. chested, big ass. I mean, mm-hmm. she's a supermodel. Well, That's what they look like. You know, yeah. big lips, big, big everything. <laughs> and uh, we get her big ass up on this one. <laughs> <laughs> we get her up there, and we got her. We you know, get her strapped in. You know. Well, hold on. Was oh, before was set the scene. Was like all your other open buddies all like around. Like was it a yeah, big old well, scene? A- like uh, I remember Turtle Pal was heading for Wayne Fulmer at the time, and Wayne was like, "Hey, bro, <laughs> come on, bro. She ain't gonna fit in T Wood Sub. You ain't gonna get that big ass on that. Uh, that's a thirteen and a half, best case scenario there, bro. Yeah, uh, so he said you might want to get uh, Bobby Harris to saddle. I mean, <laughs> steer wrestlers, let's give one of the steer wrestling saddles. Yeah, uh, everybody was there. Uh, like that was that was up on Saturday, or either waiting for the short round. So they're all just like. Now, this is like a big deal back then. It was yeah. crazy, you know. And they're probably looking at you like this, mom. Yeah, they it might how do you pull this the fucking like Mikey. Mikey. Me. I'm like, what what the hell? Oh, you were there too? No. Well, oh, I mean oh, what's th- happened? Th- this this got around pretty fast. Oh, okay. word, word did travel very fast, didn't they? There was, <laughs> there was pagers going off all yeah. over the country. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we so we ride around, you know, we're riding around the circle in the warm-up pen. She's got her she wants to carry her dog. And she's, got, <laughs> she's got her dog. And she's riding around. So this horse is broke. Oh, he's broke. <laughs> Gentle. So I tell her, I'm like, hey, you know, give, give, get rid of this guy. Let's, let's party. <laughs> okay, okay, get this guy out of here. Got to shoot your shot. Got to shoot your shot. And she, so we, we get done, and I think nothing of it, you know. And the guy comes back over there. She had, you know, she had a couple makeup girls, and then uh, maybe two cameramen, and then this guy. Uh, was like her lawyer manager type dude. I think he like fell in love with her or some kind of scandal, or whatever. <laughs> kind of bullshit. And she was, um, I would say, medicated s. You know, like I always partied a lot. I was more of a. I'm I, no, no, uh, not ashamed of anything. I was more of a fun uh, drug doer in my day. You know, I. Yeah, I always did the drug. Don't ever let it do you. You know, have a good time. Yeah. More addicted to having a good time than we're anything. definitely open in the bar. And so, uh, you know, I, I I would say she was more on the medicated side of drug <laughs> use. You know, if if that makes any sense to you, kind of like you're talking to somebody, but you're not really talking to somebody. You know, it's kind of deal. And um, she, uh, her guy comes over there and says, "Hey, Anna Nicole wants to." She said, "Get one of your friends." She said, come to the, she's got the penthouse suite at the MGM, and uh, she wants to party. So who was a lucky friend? Oh, dude, I brought six people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's a homie. I brought, yeah, I brought, yeah, I brought homie. as many as my boys as we could fit in there. Ain't no fun. The homies yeah. can't have none. Think, uh, fellow world, uh, world champion uh, Luke Ranquino, mayor of Man. Big Luke. Big Luke. Yeah. Shout out, Luke. So maybe a... Uh, Kelly Barker, maybe I don't possibly. Know. Yeah, possibly fun time haver as well. Yeah, he's a Barker's a great dude and love, uh, him. love him. But we uh, we load up and we go over there and it's it's awkward at first. You know, we're in a, it's just this this penthouse is you know it's two miles long. Right? Yes, yeah. and at it, it, first you're just like we're all we're you know we're in we put our outfits on we're wearing our cowboy hats and stuff which none of them made it back the next morning. <laughs> Uh, you know, and we're just, you know, it's, it's forced awkward fun. Then they just turn the cameras off and they're like, Hey, we're not even in a film. And then y'all, we just start partying. It's like a, you know, buffet type environment, you know, and hot uh, tubs. Yeah. Family style. Family <laughs> style. And so, uh, long story short, you know, they kick the cameras back on at the end when you're all a little bit inebriated and out of your and you don't give a shit if the camera yeah, exactly. On. And next thing you know, is makeup girls are getting hat whipped. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, yeah, so I, was it? So it was you six, 
some makeup girls and Anna. Yeah, or was two, it, like was, more... it was the makeup, the two makeup girls, the two camera guys, Anna and six of us. And then everybody, they weren't, they were like these folks here, not supposed to be involved. But when they can't, they, they got involved very they quickly. They got involved. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the other cowboys gentlemen that I brought with me were fun loving as well. Possibly they, Luke they, they, no? they shot there, shot no, no, no. I won't bring any of that. <laughs> Possibly. But they all had a good time and and it was fun and uh yeah, it was a little you know, they had a big old hot tub in there and we we're in that and then I, I kinda honestly just uh, truth I just blacked out. You know, I, I, w- I wake up the next morning and you know, it's it's a lot like the hangover, you know, where yeah. you're just like there's a chicken wrong <laughs> fucking all tiger my, in the bathroom. All my clothes are wet. There's uh, a lady and some dude that weren't there when we started. You know, and everyone's uh you know, they're asleep and they're just all over this room and I get up and I'm gathering my shit up and soaking wet, you know, I'm just like putting my wet clothes on and I'm like, you know, they're they're asleep and she don't, and no one looks like a supermodel anymore. <laughs> and I, uh, I creep through there and I'm waking these dudes up. Like, you know, it's perf starts at two, <laughs> it's 10 30. We're in Vegas, you know, we're not even in the town that we're going to be Like, we need to sprinkle some Mondelay on it and get our asses back down there. And uh, we, the cowboy hats were just left strode. <laughs> we're driving back there, and it's just like the truck is just silent, you know. It's just like that's the best. Yeah, you know it is. When it's just the like best. that's a hundred percent the yep. best. One guy's like, "Fuck my life, I lost my phone. <laughs> my wife's gonna kill me." Other dudes like, "This We've is all great. We've all been there. It's the best day of We've my life." We've all been there. <laughs> the <guy's> like, oh, <laughs> fuck. The other one's like, <laughs> "I never forget T. What he's a T. I was uh, I, I, I was older, about five years older than T. So I've been." I'd been in the trenches, if you will, a little bit. So Travis is just there. He'd been up there with Walt Shelter, and he was just like, dude, Fletch, this is <laughs> as good as it gets. That's not in my life. <laughs> if we're going to oh, forget it. That's fucking hilarious. Thank you for that. And there's always the one that backseat their, their, their life's over with. And just, like, just, oh, like, just staring yeah. out uh-huh. the window. Yeah, he's like, it's done. You don't know her. You guys don't know her like I do. You don't know her like I do. She's got my shit just outside the house right now. Yeah, she's gonna call my mom. Oh fuck, I'm taking, crying. Oh, I'm taking my horses and everything. Oh, we get back, we row. We, we, win the rodeo. Dude. That was like the funniest part of the story. We, we win the rodeo, we win Laughlin. You know, we're on cloud nine. And so we're super tired. I remember Sunday night. <laughs> you think, you think. We're not driving anywhere Sunday night. We're, we're Sunday night, we're playing a little blackjack. I think. You know, probably won a little money. I think Camus Jennings was there. He probably took it off my blackjack table and spent yeah. I, I went to bed and I uh like reach. I wake up the next morning and then we're we're driving out. We stop there. I don't know what is it, needles? Needles. Yeah. yeah. The four corner yeah, yeah, yeah. in the middle of nowhere. Needles. We stop One gas it. station yeah. and a little bit. Yeah, just nothing. Nothing. Just <laughs> trash and grossness. <laughs> And uh, I'm, we're getting some diesel, and I'm just like, you know, that hungover. You're just like, you be like, shit. You know, I, I was I was dating another barrel racer at the time, and she was, uh, uh, you know, well known as well. And uh, for the for the innocent, we'll just keep all the names out of it. Yeah, no, just to protect, <laughs> the to protect the innocent. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I walk up. And uh, I see, you know, in the old days, you know, we didn't have social media. You know, we had, <laughs> we, thank God. Thank God for you. I know what to say, doing already. Thank God. You know, if I had a good oh run. It would have been cut very short at yeah. social media. But, uh, you know, we had, they had the National Enquirer and Star Magazine. They had these, these smut, <laughs> smut magazines yeah. out front, like the USA people or whatever, and they were out front of every gas station, it'd be like five of them, you know, and I'm walking up there to go get something from the store, and I look, and, <laughs> and my, no. my picture, full blown, no. all, all five of these smut magazines, you know, and, and sponsored uh, shirts, hell, yeah. my favorite is, uh, 
the one that was on the Enquirer, and it's got me and her, and she's got her dog. <laughs> and uh, it says, uh, Anna Nicole saddles up with her partner and her pooch. Oh, no. And I'm like, fuck my life, dude. <laughs> I got Wrangler. Still a little hungover. I got my shit on my shirt. Dude. Yeah, I'm just like, oh, dude. I lost my girlfriend and my sponsors. <laughs> yes, all in, all in the oh. same day. One round. Oh, uh. yeah! When what uh, first time on television, Las Vegas Open was sponsored, <laughs> and I'm in the fucking inquiry. I'm trying uh, to explain that this is not the first one that I. <laughs> <laughs> this is not me. This is not me. I don't even know who that was. Uh, is, this, is this pre or post the sheet and the buckle in? Oklahoma? This is uh, post that. This yeah. is post oh, that. So oh, I should have learned. So your poor oh, mom had to see the inquiry. The, the buckle. The buckle's out. Oh yeah, Mama saw everything. <laughs> So how long did it take for that phone call? Like, were you home yet by the time you I, got the phone call? I walk, I, I open the deal and I'm buying, I put a quarter as in. As many as I can. I'm going to frame them. And, and Travis like, what are you doing, bro? And I said, well, I'm just going to, I can't get, this, this This shit can't get out. Dude. Oh, I'll do what? <laughs> my needles. I got to take them all, dude. My girl, dude. My, <laughs> my, my ride. My I want to know how it even got to needles. He said my ride, my everything. And I said, he said, oh. Travis was a funny, funny guy. You know, he's witty, dude. And he says, hell, oh, that ship sailed flat. Yeah. I mean, Time to let that shit go. You can keep those if you want, but that's the least of your problems. <laughs> <laughs> these, these needles, are, this isn't your people here. Oh. This shit's like a day late. Oh, oh, that's just we have no longer, we're just pulling out, dude. And my phone just, I got Robert Lever calls me. Guy's got a miss call. I just let that go to voicemail. And, uh. You don't know Kia just burning yeah, down. Yeah, M- Mike Pilon from Cactus Rose, but Barry Berg called me. And Barry Berg was the first guy to ever give me a, a sponsorship. I remember when I was, uh, you know, I'm from Florida and Speedy, uh, Speedy's from Florida. And, um, you know, I, I I loved Ken Williams. I, I love it. I thought Speed, I, th- I still think Speed Williams, I think what he did for 10 years was just entire just domination. I don't think it will ever we'll ever see that one dude, one team just annihilate everyone on the reg. And he, um, he had the speedsters, he had speedsters and speedster twos. These were the best. You could only rip four steers with these rigs, but they were the out, right out of the tide. I mean, you didn't even need to get a stretch. They felt so good. And me and Speedy's wife, Jennifer, a really good friend, super, super close. And, uh, you know, speeds of, he's, he's speedy. You know, he's not, a nice guy i wouldn't say he's uh he's just driven just a hard ass no he's deal. just a he's a you know he's you know he's 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 uh he's speed you know <laughs> it's all he cares about is uh kicking your ass and that's what he did but he uh because of jennifer he was forced to give me ropes you know like i would just go and just raid his i would just open his manger and he would just have boxes of ropes you know he's their man and yeah speed gets what he wants i would just Go through. I mean, I just be, if if one little thing was wrong, he would just throw him down. He's like, you can have the, this like touch because he's like a cycle. This is fine, this is fine <laughs> for me. And uh, Barry Bird met Barry Bird, and he said, "Dude, you got to stop stealing speeds ropes, and you need to get a rope deal." And he said, "Yeah, <laughs> let's go." And he he gave me a rope deal, and uh, I'll never forget him for it. He's a, he's a genius and he's a great man. But he called me, and I answered his phone call first, and he said, "Fletch." Uh, First off, congratulations. That's solid. Uh, congratulations on Laughlin and, and and whatever went down last night. And he said, uh, uh, but me and you can, I need to know, they just want to, they just want a damage report. You know, and yeah. that's, that's all they wanted was to know, like, what, what were they going to see? You know, mm-hmm. what? Is what, there any more pictures that are right? Gonna come out? What's going to come out when they air this? Are, are we, you know, are we in danger? And I said, honestly, dude, I have no idea. Yeah, I oh my, I don't goodness. remember, man. But I know I changed clothes. You know, we all changed clothes when we went to party. We just had like normal clothes on, and I said, you know, at the with your shirt on, I was a gentleman. Yeah, right. and and uh, you know, without your shirt on, I was probably a psycho. I, I was, I was Mikey Fletcher. I just might be Mikey. How's it going? The windows to the wall. To the no. window to the wall. Yeah, so, That's fucking funny. You know, it turned out it was uh, they edited it out great, and so it, it 
Got me some. The street cred was great, though. Street cred for the sure, man. Street cred yeah. still going on today. It's, it's yeah. been decades. Yeah, Shelby, my uh, girlfriend, best uh, thing that ever happened to me. Uh, she loves the story. Thank you for bringing. Yeah, it. we we can tell well, that she loves the story. Yeah, when I went out loving the story. Static. She <laughs> really enjoys it, so I appreciate that. Now, Caesar. Sure. I'll get back. When when I was getting into the game, we started to go to the rodeos. That that story come out, you know what I mean? That's awesome. And and like I was like, man, I gotta hang out. And every every of this Reno and some of these big rodeos, I would try to find Mike if I could every 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 morning. We always, kind of get him up out of bed and like, hey dude, what'd you do last night? Like live it t- through him. T- t- tell me the story <laughs> what you did last night. You always had the you always had the best stories. We we always talk about like who's your favorite guest that came on this and that and. We built a, I don't know if they told you, but uh, built a whole new studio. So it's down the road a little bit. We're going to go into this new studio. The new thing's going to be what's your favorite story, I think, from any guest. Because we like all the guests, right? So the mm-hmm. favorite story. I got to say that one's going to be for you. You just made me cry. So last time you, that's, that's up there with Mule Train. And, yeah, I felt like I was yeah. there. Yeah. Well, the I mean, battles and cocaine. I feel like there's so much more. To, I mean, <laughs> we'll definitely have to have you back on for sure for around two because this. Uh, I mean, there's we didn't even hit the iceberg. I know oh, on your yeah. stories and Dennis, uh, it's hard to it's hard to compete with Dennis Gates. And I <laughs> I love Caesar. You know, he acts like I was uh, awesome, but I you know I he's a three fingered assassin. I I, th- I thought he was cool when I met him uh, from day one. I just loved his his you know his style. He was chill. He's uh, we got the same you know vibe. And we would go stay. At, I just loved going to the California rodeos and going to stay at Wade Wheatley's house and me and Caesar just kicking it and going hit hit some golf balls, oh, yeah. you know, just you know, just run some or not, you know, whatever we wanted to do, just having a good time and it's uh, it's been a great friendship. I I'll finish this off with uh, you know the reason I quit rodeoing and you know uh, I had to grow up and get a real job. I I went to Clay Trines and. We uh, we were gonna. Walt and Walt and Clay Tryon were practicing for the NFR. It was like two weeks before the NFR, and Clay Tryon gets um, he's got twenty four head of number one Mexicans, and they're not tipped. They're almost too big. They're dead. They're not dead fresh. They're probably been up two times, three times. I mean, they're fresh, mm-hmm. but they are stout. I mean, they're too big to be like. I mean, their, their, their horns are big, not tipped. I mean, they're a, like, you would say, these are, these are open, strong, like they're two, they're, they're advanced cattle. Mm-hmm. Clay's arena is super deep. It goes uphill. The wind blows in your face and uh, everything pushes to the right. And, and uh, me and Travis are going to try it one more time. This is like our last ride in the sun, you know, mm-hmm. And we go there, we get to go rope and I pull up and Caesar's not saddled. He's just over there. He's got his little, anybody knows Caesar other Cruz, he's got this little man-made, like before they had a. Clifford Franklin. Yeah. Uh, before they had yeah. like a little healing goat thing. And it's before they even had that. They have it. Every kid's got one now. Mm-hmm. He had one forever and he's just over there just laying the gate down, laying the gate down. I was like, why aren't your horses saddled? He's like, I don't rope here, dude. <laughs> uh, that's Caesar de la Cruz. I don't rope here. I don't rope here, dude. I'm going to go down the road. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I found out why uh, after that. But, you know, Clay Trine's intense. You know, and we've I, talked about that before, how intense he is. Yeah. I love Clay Trine. I, I do. I've always uh, admired him. I think he's I think he's one of the greatest competitors, probably one of the greatest headers I've ever seen, you know, besides speed. Um, he's got great kids. His wife's awesome. And, uh, but you know, when you meet Clay and you know Clay good, you know, when you meet a guy, you think, oh, that guy's intense. Sometimes when you meet a guy, you think, I'm thinking about calling the cops because that guy's a psychopath. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's, that's more <laughs> Clay. <laughs> yes. He's more on the other side of that. And, and we're roping. He's got a chick riding his horse around. We got four horses over there a piece. And, and, and he's just, I mean, he's just, I mean, it's not NFR practice where they're like, you know, He's still roping like this full contact. I mean, he is tail of the pin. It. He's tail of the pin. The wind's blowing. He's just, he's got some heat on it. And it is just, wah, wah. I mean, it sounds like 
Shane Sproul, circa 06, rock and roll mojo. I mean, Shout it, out, Shane. He, he is getting some smoke. And I mean, Wally's just coming in there and not down. You know, yeah. just standing him down. And, uh, <laughs> me and Travis, we're going shot for shot. You know, we're, we're shot for shot with him. I mean, we're making the best runs of our lives. And we run them through. Probably it's about the third pin. I mean, this is a steer like, you know, we run 60s. So this is like the 28th, ninth steer we ran. And I, I missed the right horn. I missed the right horn. And he's still just. Wow, and I just I I T Wood gets a let, you know, and he gets a let, and in a bit, and I just I told Travis that day I said, dude, I, I don't want to. This dude, he broke my soul. You know, <laughs> Clay trying Michael to, Jordan, dude. Yeah, he, yeah, bro- yeah. he broke my soul over there, and I mean, people, these young kids, like they don't want none of his smoke. I mean, I'm telling you, they don't. It was nasty, and yeah. uh, and, and he uh, he you know he's now he's home doing his deal, but that's. Uh, you know, I, I left there and I, you know, like I said, I grew up and got a real job. And, uh, you know, people, when they leave rodeo, they don't know how to leave. I mean, I got a lot of friends that are just like stuck in this. Um, you know, I don't know what to do. I roped my whole life. So it's either be like Monty Joe and just keep roping your whole life. Or, you know, you got to do something. You got to be a Caesar's going to be a dad. And you, know, you got to go to, you know, some people are lucky enough to go to the horse shows and, and do that world. Some people are lucky enough to uh, have schools, you know, and do that. And, you know, but that schools aren't for everyone. A lot of these team, great team ropers, you can't have a, yeah. They can't tell you how to make your coffee, much less that do what they do. And so, uh, you know, and a lot of them get stuck in this, you know, they're just, it's a bad spot. And I, uh, that's when I started playing golf and uh, I, I fell in love with it and it kind of gave me a, release of uh the degenerate gambler and uh, let's talk about your app we started an app um a golf gambling app golf gaming app uh, gaming. Uh, a gaming a, a good great friend of mine uh brody self who used to uh rope a lot uh from burleson texas i you know what you want to get him on here and he can yeah, ask us yeah, come on come up here take my spot talk about your app but we uh Brody coming to the stage. Yeah, Brody yeah. coming to the Brody stage. Stay, you know, I ain't got no stories like that. To the main <laughs> stage. To the main stage. Brody still to the main stage. But uh, you know, me and Brody hadn't seen each other in years and I, I saw him on the golf course and uh and uh he was just starting out and we I hadn't been playing that long either. And you know, I, I love golf because everybody that I respected or had money or had a job, had a, had a, had things going for him were playing golf and they were doing these deals on the golf course. And I thought, well, that's what I want to do. And, you know, me and Brody uh, started playing a lot of golf together. And I don't care who you are, when you're playing golf, you want to play for something. You know, yeah. if it's push-ups or if it's a hundred dollars a hole or if it's a quarter a hole. And everybody that plays golf wants to play for something. And we were gambling a lot. And we we noticed that after it's over, it's, uh, you know, a lot of, one guy's got a little scorecard. looks like Chinese arithmetic, and he's got a, oh, you won 10 bucks. This takes an hour after we get done playing golf to let me know I lost $8. You know? right. And, uh, and uh, we had an idea, and, and Brody's uh, pretty tech savvy, and he had made an app, and, and we said, hey, let's, uh, let's, let's just get it. Let's just make an app to just put your score in and tell us who won. Pick the game, pick any game, and... And tell us who won. You know, when you rodeo, you got a secretary. Let's mm-hmm. let's have the secretary right here. Sweet. And uh, you know, we had uh, golf pro. Had, you know, a dog fight is a you know battle for supremacy. You know, yeah. between two people. And uh, you know, when you're gambling with your buddies, that's a dog fight. And so we started daily dog fights, and uh, we're just uh, we're launching it now. We're gonna have a, you know about two months just to you know it's finished. Just got finished, approved in the app store, and uh, you know Brody's done an amazing job. He's a perfect partner because he. You know, he, he can talk to these people like I don't. I they're I talking know. foreign. Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, they do talk in foreign. Let, let's talk about it, Brody. Man, you know, we just like Mikey said, we we're gambling, and we had to have four or five different games going on between that one game. Mm-hmm. And at the time it was over, I mean, people would, everybody would leave. Like uh, they'd be like texting the group chat, who owes who what, and then we'd still be there, or, or I'd go home and figure it all out, and. They'd say send a picture of the scorecard, and now you can, whenever it's over, we just plug it in and it logs it and or saves it, and uh, basically it sends out a text and says, "Hey, you owe this guy sixty bucks, and uh, you won sixty, and just keep it. We keep it simple, and 
uh, pick your game, pick how much you want to play for, and enter your score, and then you ain't got to worry about nothing because you go in the clubhouse, and, I mean, it takes, like you said, an hour to figure it out. And, and that's on every golf course in America. Every single old man group, they're all sitting around oh, 100%. Uh, trying to figure out yeah, what. And it's, yeah. uh, you know, we got uh, correlated with the USGA handicap. So you've already got to put your handicap in something. So this kind of helps with the sandbag and, you know, it keeps the scores legit and it logs your score right into the handicap uh, to the, to the golf app. And, uh, and that's, it's, it, we've got so much good feedback, you know, we don't ever know till we know, but I mean, there's not one golf pro or anyone that hasn't thought it was a great idea. So is it, it so four guys go to the golf course. Yep. You four guys enter that app, right? Mm-hmm. And then at the end of the day, basically, it tells yeah. you score. Well, one guy puts the score in, and, and at the put, end of the day, before you even get done on 18, it'll sex you, hey, you, know, you won 12 bucks, okay. you lost 10 to Caesar, Caesar won 15, and it sends them all a text, got the Venmo, got everything. And it just it has a course name and things yeah, like so that. Yeah, so we have, uh, it's called API integration with the USGA. And it brings up all the course rating oh, and your handicap. And so whenever it's through, it'll automatically log your score to the USGA handicap system. So, cause there's a big problem with that as well. People don't like if they go out and shoot 75 that day, they might not put it in their, their handicap and, uh, oh. but you'll put 95 in there all day long. So you can, you go win a rope in somewhere. You don't want anybody to find out. Yeah, It'd be nice yeah. for the global to do that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want nobody to find out about that. You keep that on the down low. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it just in there, like if there's you know three or four groups, if there's a bunch of you going on a golf trip, and so and, you can do that too. Then a oh, bunch yeah. of groups you can see what someone else is doing in the group in front oh, of you, you know, instead of yelling, like, "Hey, what are you? Two under?" Yeah. You know, you can just click on the app and see. You know, hey, these guys are they're even, and we're still fine. And it's yeah. called daily dog fights. Daily dog fights. We're not to that stage yet, but it's. I mean, it's in the plans. Like we've already built the infrastructure to it. Uh, or to it, and uh, it's like called wireframe. So we've already built all the screens and mm-hmm. the plugs and everything, but we haven't exactly released that yet. We're just trying to get everything right with the USGA right now, how they want it. And it's any it's a, any ETA like when the listeners could get it. Uh, hopefully, we're hoping to be approved by USGA in the next week or two, and then we're gonna soft test it for a month or so with a couple. This will be big here, dude. There's yeah, like, yeah. like yeah. literally. And that's 10 golf courses driving over here. Ropers yeah. and golf and yeah. go hand in hand. Yeah, and I Peace feel like we, we've got some good people behind us. Uh, we partnered with a guy out of the Prosper, Texas. Uh, his name is Michael Pettis, and uh, his best friend's Tory Hunter, MLB baseball player, How nine-time awesome. gold glove winner. And, nice. Uh, so we'll have some good. And we got a couple other ones. I don't know if we can say their name yet, but it's – going to be yeah we've got some the stadium good hot. built at prosper texas to play high school football in. his name rhymes with don daily but we may, <laughs> may or may not have he on yeah he we, may or may not live in a hooters he may, or may, not live, he may or may not live in a hooters and he really likes I think, yeah i think i think he's a good partner for us <laughs> sounds like very fitting yeah we've yeah. been blessed do so, we have okay well cool well you guys will kind of keep us updated right well uh, oh, no we, doubt because yeah. like i said dude we i mean everybody i know plays golf there's so many golf courses around here everywhere. So a lot of rodeo guys, you know, we've done some content. Uh, well, I was talking to Tim, uh, that wild horse, uh, uh, video, Tim, uh, Tim Lindsay, he, he wants to shoot us. Uh, we, we play, uh, Dustin Esquiza and Levi Lord play a lot of golf. They're, they're great, great golfers and they rope and they're, they're fellow dog fighters. Like Caesar is a great golfer as well. And, uh, we, we're, uh, we love to scramble, you know, a two-man scramble. It's fun, exciting. It's uh, not too much pressure, and it's uh, pretty good content. And, and so we've done some, we've had some two-man scrambles with uh, with Dustin and Levi, and that's exciting. And we're gonna do make some content. And maybe uh, if we can get uh, my dream two-man scramble is uh, me and Brody versus uh, Shane Sproul and uh, the guy to my right. Yeah, right yeah. Oh, nice. yeah, I'm down. So we can make that happen. If we could get that happen, I think yeah. that would break the internet. TPC right Scottsdale over there. Oh, How about man. Monday morning right after that turn? <laughs> <laughs> That's the living out there filming. Yeah. Okay, cool. We would get somebody sponsored to pay for that tea time. Oh, I heard that. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe KB Farms, possibly. I'm thinking, or, I'm thinking yeah. right here, this guy. <laughs> Flip Flip Farms. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Well, we definitely got to have you back for a part two in the new studio, but keep us. 
up to date on the app and, and we'll keep it up there and keep it rolling man oh, man i appreciate can. everything yeah great stories uh, y'all are great dudes <laughs> i love you guys and i love Thank this you, man like, yeah, a, like a brother it. right yeah, here. Yeah. so uh, one of my favorites uh, uh yeah. we'll, we'll be back for sure i appreciate right. it Thank Thank you. You.